Hi, I'm Andrew Knappen, and you're listening in time. Yeah, no, um, thanks for joining us, Amber. It's uh, it's been really good to talk to sort of people again we've uh, we took a little bit of a hiatus with this podcast but we're back and going and we're super strong with it now uh people will check out our you know connor albert episodes uh parthenope my delilah we've got a few few cool ones coming up from the uk and we're trying to get even cooler in the Amer- in the states um so yeah i mean we'll start off talking a little bit about i mean the elephant in the room moon child uh you guys are <laughs> 10 years strong now I believe 2011 you officially started as it feels That's right 10 years old as a band now it's kind of crazy it flew by um yeah we've all like grown so much as musicians and and people <laughs> so it's been it's been good I feel like we just keep getting better I don't know <laughs> one thing that I didn't anticipate is um we started over our shared love of Neo Soul, which we all kind of discovered at the same time. And then, so in the beginning, like the sound in our ears was like exactly the same, you know, jazz majors who just found Neo Soul. And then over the last 10 years, everybody's kind of, you know, got their new music that they like and different genres. And um, so it's been a little bit more compromised, but also I think cooler stuff happens because there's more influences coming in and, stuff that like I wouldn't do by myself but because somebody else thought of it it's like oh shit that's really cool <laughs> so that was something I didn't anticipate that has happened over time that's kind of been cool yeah that's awesome I mean I'd love to know a bit more about the history of the band um, from what I read uh, it started off as your solo project and then it kind of formed into this like incredible band do you want to talk to, uh, talk to us a bit more about that yeah in college i recorded an EP of like the first songs I ever wrote and I had just started singing and uh, me and my friend Christine Donaldson organized this quote-unquote tour where we just went up the west coast and basically like stayed with our family and played for our family in different cities and um, yeah I brought Andres and Max as a horn section and while we were on the road we kind of we the three of us ended up in the car together a lot we had two cars anyway uh, we were in the smaller car and we just realized we had the same music taste so we're like we should try writing some music together and uh, it was really fun and easy and that's kind of what brought us together yeah and uh i guess with that you've had quite a few albums uh come out through it and then you've like how so you've you already t- touched on it as well with you know just the growth of just like each other as well um, everyone sort of discovering their own thing musically and then bringing it back into uh, Moonchild. How have you found the, the writing process to evolve in that sense? Is it always been the same sort of methodology in terms of the way you approach a song, the concept, or it's an idea to start with? Yeah, uh, I think we all kind of, we all produce and write on our own uh, and we always have. Um, so we kind of come to the band with our ideas and then whatever we all mutually love is what we end up working on together. And uh, so it usually starts as one person's idea, but by the end of the process, everyone has touched it in some way, whether it's like a horn part or a bass line or, you know, whatever we decide to contribute. So yeah, that's kind of our process as a band. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I discovered you guys through uh, the Voyager album and uh, the, the the song "The List." Um, it was on one of my playlists, and I fell in love with the band uh, ah. immediately. Um, incredible album, by the way. I just wanted to know, like, how do you think your sound has evolved over the years? Because there are, I've noticed some like some clear differences. Like, my favorite song of your guys is um, is "The Other Side." That's my that's incredible mm. song. So I just wanted to know, yeah, how do you think the sound has evolved over the years? Well, we've all grown and just learned more about logic and the instruments we play and adding new instruments. So uh, Andres learned guitar right before we recorded Little Ghost. And that's why there's so much guitar in Little Ghost. Um, 
he was like sending me all these beads that were really guitar based. And I was like, oh my gosh, these are so beautiful. <laughs> so I feel like just our growth as musicians and, you know, the, mu the new music that comes out that we're influenced by and um, it all kind of contributes to the progression of our sound. I guess, I guess one of the biggest things that's happened, I mean, for everyone equally is, uh, I mean, the last 18 months uh, to not go unnoticed. Um, you know, everything being shut down and we're slowly getting back there. How has that had an impact on yourself? And maybe if you've had insight on like the, the rest of the band as well, like how, how have you all found it and working together? Like, have, have you sort of just taken a break from things just over the last year and a half? It's been kind of up and down. So phases of working on music a lot and then just not being in a place where you can work on music or burning out or... Uh, so it's kind of been, yeah, off and on for the last 18 months. Um, our process hasn't changed too much because we do do so much kind of on our own. And then typically we get together for like a week at a time and put everything together. So we did that over Zoom this last year instead of doing it in person, which was a little different, um, but still worked out fine. Uh, so as far as the band goes, I don't think it's had too much effect on on our music making, except for that we've been home more, which is new. Over the last few years, we've toured a ton. So being being home has actually been a little bit of a gift because we were able to work on the next project. And <laughs> before, before COVID, we were kind of trying to figure out when we would even do it. Like we had all these ideas started and we didn't know when we were gonna fit it in. And so uh, when all of our tours got canceled, we were like, I guess this is what we'll do now. <laughs> So. Yeah, I mean, that's, um, it's, it's, it's so relatable to, I think everyone in the music industry uh, today, we've all, you know, experienced this insane thing that, you know, only our generation will ever uh, experience. But I guess one of the pros about it is that you've been able to spend some um, quality time with family and, you know, time at home is, um, is quite refreshing after so many years on tour. So how has life been, you know, spending so much time with family and not being on the road so much? It's honestly been such a gift. <laughs> um, I, uh, I got engaged and uh, my partner and I, <laughs> we've been, you know, together for several years and, and I haven't been home for like more than a month at a time since we've been together. So just being able to have all of this time with him has been really, really wonderful despite all of the craziness that's going on. So, yeah. That's, uh, that's, that's really good to hear. I mean, uh, have you, I think a lot of people, what I've, what I've found at least uh, just uh, through conversation is a lot of people have picked up some like random new hobbies that you would have never associated with them or would have thought anyone would actually do in their spare time. Have you found yourself going down that rabbit hole? I've just been uh, bragging to Joe about how many jigsaw puzzles I've done. <laughs> I love that. I love puzzles. <laughs> yeah. I, I, They're I, so I, satisfying. Yeah, I, I forgot how satisfying they were. Um until I started doing them again, I was like, yeah, jigsaw puzzles are the one. Yeah, I started sewing, so. uh, which has been, it's been really fun. My, I grew up, my mom sewed a lot growing up and, and was never really interested in figuring out how to do it, but I always in the back of my mind was like, it would be nice to have this skill, you know? Uh, so when COVID hit, I was like, I think, I think now's the time. And it's actually been really fun just to like, make little gifts for people and make stuff for around the house and so that's my COVID hobby. <laughs> yeah so what, what sort of stuff have you made anything like uh, really fancy was it just sort of like um, was it you starting at foundation level and then sort of building it up from there? Yeah like tote bags and napkins and uh, scarves like like rectangular and square things. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like uh, irregular like uh, polygons or anything just yet. I tried sewing a coat and it took me like an entire week and it didn't turn out that great. So I have some learning to do, <laughs> but it's been fun. Yeah, I think, I think it's good to have, I mean, just that journey of discovery is something like just, just super fun to go down again, isn't it? I mean, I yeah, think, learning a new skill. Yeah, we all forget that. I mean, so myself and Joe are musicians as well. And we, we forget that, like, actually, we kind of took that journey to start with like ages ago. And we're just sort of redoing it, reliving it. Yeah, it's nice once you've 
done it because it's like, okay, I'm really bad at this right now, but like, all I have to do is keep working on it. You know, it's not so much, I feel like at the beginning of learning music, I was like, oh, will I ever be able to? And now that it's kind of, you know, come this far, it's like, oh, it's just time. It's a matter of time. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, um, one of the other things that has happened like worldwide over lockdown is like a, we spoke about it so many times in the podcast. Um, it's almost like a running theme now. It's like it's this kind of idea of collective uh, burnout in which like musicians just, you know, it's the perfect time to practice. We've got a year of doing nothing, so you know what better to do? But it's just so hard because I don't, I don't know. We don't know why it's so hard. Have you, have you felt that at all, or has it been kind of a productive year in terms of you know getting better at your instrument because you could play so many instruments oh I've definitely felt burnout. out I one of my biggest sources of inspiration is going to shows and like seeing live music and so not having that has been like it's been I've been trying to find other ways to get inspired which I've found is just like time away doing other creative things that aren't music or you know like I feel like before I had more balance, like on tour, we would, I would work on lyrics and make drum grooves in the van. Oh, well, one of my, the biggest sources of inspiration for me was going to see live music yeah. um, and sing show. So not having that, just trying to look for other ways to be inspired and like create the balance that is normally in life. Like on the road, I would uh, write lyrics and make drum grooves and then come home and, and write over the grooves and record the vocals and then hit the road again. And so now it's like being all in one place all the time. It's like, how can I take time away and do other stuff that fills my cup, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Not expecting, I feel like there's this expectation that creativity is limitless. And if you just have enough willpower to sit down and do it, it'll, it'll happen. But I think you know, burnout is real and taking time away shouldn't be like a guilty thing. <laughs> I think that's something I can relate to a lot is um, I, I I had to learn it, like kind of, I had to relearn it, I guess, was when, you know, I I think social media in that sense is super toxic when, you know, they're just like, oh, if, if you really want it, you'll you'll work towards it or you'll power through it. And I, I, after a while, I thought, fuck that. <laughs> I can't, I can't at, at this point. Like, I think, the way I sort of explained it to myself was, you know, like I, not everyone functions the same way. Not everyone thinks or does things the same way. So how can we all work towards things the same way? Um, but yeah, no, it's it's really good to hear that. Like, yeah, uh, you sort of, you know, uh, a, a virtuoso or a, a person, a master of your craft at that caliber, oh. is getting the same thing. Um, <laughs> but I mean, it's sweet. so with, uh, like moving away a little bit from Moonchild. So, of course, you mentioned that you actually started before Moonchild, sorry, you were doing your own solo EP stuff and then you formed Moonchild. So, and it's, it's just like a like, happy accident, which is great. Uh, so was there ever an intention back then to f form a project or was it always going to be just Anne Ben Averin? Well, it was uh, kind of the start for me too so I didn't really have a plan <laughs> I was also like a jazz saxophone major at school and singing and songwriting was brand new so it wasn't something I had always dreamed of doing it was just something that I was interested in and decided to follow and it just kind of like took me in this new direction that I didn't expect um, so yeah I mean all of us all three of us have done solo projects and work outside of the band so it's not so much like a, oh, you must only do this with us. Um, so, yeah. yeah. I think that's really good though, because one of the first things, I, uh, one of the other first first ways I discovered you guys was the uh, the tiny desk. Um, and I really, oh, cool. I really do want to talk more about that in a minute. But um, one of the things I noticed was after, at the end of the show, you did take, you took the time to to talk about every single person in the band, and I really, really thought that was great. Mm. Um, you know, what, what, what's your kind of um, opinion on, on, you know, raising awareness for these smaller acts? I think it seems as though you're really up for it. Oh, I think everybody should just be lifting up people they love all the time. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's not even about size. It's just like, oh, this person's amazing and like, check them out. You know, I, I think that should just be the vibe always. So. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. I think it's, it's, it's I think it's, uh, it's amazing. Not, I think I don't, I don't think enough people do it because there's so many, um, so many bands out there that just, you know, obviously Moonchild is a core band, but you know, if 
if a band has backing vocalists or a band has uh, session guys, sometimes they don't all get recognized, um, which can be a shame. But, but, um, but anyway, yeah. about, about the Tiny Desk, uh, a great, great show. And it's, it's gone viral, right? almost uh, 5 million views now. Um, that must be incredible. Crazy. How was that experience? Yeah. You were you're the first person that we've had on the show that's ever you know, done a Tiny Desk show. So that's really, really cool for us to uh, talk to you. Um, how, yeah, how was that whole experience? Uh. Oh, I was a nervous wreck. <laughs> also, we, so we played, we we're on in the middle of a tour and we had just played several shows in a row and we played D- DC that night. And then we had to play Philly the night of Tiny Desk. So we had to get up really early and do Tiny Desk and then drive to Philly and play a show. So not only was I nervous, but I was just like, kind of tired you know <laughs> and I think that kind of exas- exacerbated my emotions but um also you know it's tiny desk like I've watched so many tiny desks and we were so excited when we found out we got to go on we're just like such huge fans and um so I was feeling a lot of pressure <laughs> but everything about the experience was wonderful everyone was just like incredibly nice and and helpful and the sound was amazing I think they did like the best job with you know the final product amazing <laughs> and um technique and everything don't they? it's all low volume isn't it yeah which was actually cool for us because you know we try to recreate the tracks live um and we we make adjustments in the live show to kind of like give it a new energy but we don't really do broken down stuff that often and i love broken down stuff because yeah. you know i'm kind of a soft singer and i feel like my voice can really shine when I'm not trying to like sing over anything. So um, it was really fun for us to kind of rebuild the songs with that vibe in mind. And it was fun for me as a singer to sing in that environment. Yeah. I mean, um, what's the, what's the audience like for that tiny desk, tiny desk gig? Uh, Because in some episodes that they show the audience and in some there's like, there isn't one. Did you guys have a quite a big audience for that show? We did, you know, it's funny, we did like a little run through and there were like four or five people standing around. I was like, okay, I got this four or five people. Let's go. And then they're like, okay, everyone, it's time for the show. And then like people just flooded in (laughs) and it was kind of packed out behind the cameras. And I was like, oh shit. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) But they were like a very supportive, attentive, like the best audience you could ask for. So yeah. Uh, that's um, I mean, it's the it's the it's like an office, isn't it? It's actually within their office, and um, so it's just all the staff just get up and have a nice little twenty thirty minute break. Listen to yeah, me. we saw this. The guy whose desk it is, he was like, um, "Oh, you're you're playing at my desk today," and we thought it was a joke. We're like, "Oh, haha, yeah, the tiny desk." And then once we finished, he just like rolled back around and sat <laughs> at his desk. And I was like, "Oh, he was serious, cool." <laughs> Imagine the. Uh, I think. I mean, to be fair, if I was him, I wouldn't be complaining. It's just like, oh well, I physically can't do any work, so let's just yeah, yeah, enjoy the show. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That's probably the best desk to have because uh, you can kind of grow up telling everyone that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Taylor Swift, Moonchild, Harry Styles have all played there. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, something uh, adding on to what Joe said about you bringing up like uh, all the smaller talents and everything like that and people you love. Uh, it's something you're very uh, vocal on on your social media as well. You you you're con- you're always reposting. Uh, I mean, a lot of like really cool um, stuff that's going on around the world, as well as like other artists and other musicians and stuff like that. I mean, f- first of all, like really hats off to you for that because that's something a lot of people are very prestigious about their Instagram timeline about this aesthetic that they need to run and stuff like that and. I mean, you're you're doing it all. You you're sort of you you pushing through with Moonchild, and you're actually just kind of getting these people, giving the giving people a platform where you've already got one, and you know helping them out that way. Thanks for that. Oh, you're sweet. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's fun. I just want to like share music I love. So. Yeah, I mean, how do you how do you find it when uh, it comes to? I mean, I've seen these this a lot in comments and stuff like that when it's a musician talking about a more political subject and then you know people the, the typical comments are you know stick to music or just you know you don't get involved in politics because otherwise I don't follow how do you how do you find that I think it's um I think it's white musicians responsibility to use their platform to advocate for you know resources 
for unlearning white privilege and, and whiteness and white supremacy. And I just, I mean, it's all of our responsibility, but I think if, if you're a white person with the platform, you should be using it for that to some extent. That's just, that's my personal opinion. I think, I don't know, I, I understand the like, I'm not an expert by any means, but I have a platform and I have a responsibility. So like, I'm gonna do my best to share resources. I'm not making any of these resources, you know, I'm just trying to like repost and amplify them. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's important, you know, I think, especially, I mean, I think white musicians have a, everybody has a responsibility, but we should have an, a special awareness because um, all American music is black music. So like, you know, if I just, I. <laughs> we should just know that we should be doing this. And I think, I hope that more, I think I'm seeing a lot of white artists do that, but I'm, I'm hoping that more do. Yeah. And I think um, coming from, I suppose, at least one perspective in my, uh, my perspective of um, sort of going to music college and actually just being like the only Asian person there. And I'm just like, and then you kind of look around and you look around in the jazz scene and stuff like that. And you, you sort of, you keep looking further and further and you're trying to find, either people that look like you or just you know people that you can relate to a little bit more on a on a more personal level in terms of how they've journeyed through music and you just can't find them <laughs> you just uh which is when it started becoming a little bit more apparent to me i think it was always in the back of my mind but then i thought oh shit now like it's become my problem that it's like it's all of a sudden it's a problem but like you know it was always a thing um and i think right. doing you know raising awareness like that kind of helps people put it into perspective I, I think one thing that will end up happening is a lot of people won't will only learn the hard way right uh, which is the unfortunate thing as well yeah yeah I think because so much of opportunity comes from privilege like having the money for lessons and having the money for instruments and and a lot of that is white privilege and, and monetary privilege and so I, d I think I mean, I, I felt this way about women in the music industry too. Like, I think people need to be intentional, intentional about who they're calling for things. Like the pro problem is not just gonna fix itself. <laughs> so yeah. some intentionality has to come with, with who you're calling and who you're collaborating with. And so I think that's part of the awareness too. I think that's important because it's, uh, it's pushing that subconscious thought into much more of a conscious decision. Like, you know, um, not necessarily why are you calling this person or why are you calling that, but you do know that there are more than one option available, you know, for someone to say produce right. or master something. Um, and there was a, I can't remember who did it. There's a, I think a few people have done it now that, you know, like these big music festivals and it's, they kind of just uh, blank out all these names where it's just like a male artist. And then you literally see like less than a handful of female artists on the bill. And it really puts things into perspective. Yeah. Like even at a higher <clears> level, yeah. you think it's 50, 50, but it's definitely not. Far from it. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think um, it's yeah, it's uh, yeah. Hopefully, we're sort of moving in the right direction by keeping the conversation going with it. Um, and what what else do you think we can sort of like? What, do you do you have any sort of ideas of your own? Maybe even just like how we can all work towards this. I think just being aware and, and supporting and. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have any revolutionary ideas. I'm just kind of following what I read and what I see and, and trying to be intentional and um yeah. No, that's that's cool. I mean, um go for it, Jeff. Yeah, I mean uh going back into the uh music side of things, um talk to us a bit more about um, you know, what's what's coming up with Moonchild. Obviously we've we spoke about the uh, crazy year that everybody's had. Um and you know you've been you've told us that um you know some some things have uh, you've, you've been up to quite a bit quite a lot in uh, this time. But in terms of Moonchild, um, are there any plans now that the world's very slowly getting back to normal to you know start um, getting back into gigging and touring? Because back in, uh, in the, here in the UK, things are pretty much um, sound now. You know we've got gigs every night and the big artists are going on tour again. But I'm not sure if it's the same in the states. Uh, how tell us tell us a bit more about that. It seems like things were picking back up, but now Delta is, is spreading kind of fast. So I'm not sure what, what's to come. <laughs> like I bought tickets to shows, I've been going to see music and stuff, and, and now it's, 
you know, I know more and more people who are vaccinated who've gotten the Delta variant, and yeah. it's so I don't I don't really know what to expect. But um, with Moonchild, we have some tours booked next year, not till February. Basically, February through May or June, we'll be we'll be traveling, and we're putting out an album in January, so we'll be touring the new album, and uh, we have some singles lined up. Uh, to come out at the end of this year so that's kind of where we're at yeah. I, I think it's it's weird as well like you're, you're just saying about the delta variant i think i know more people now that have had covid and i have known in the past year they've had it which is mm. kind of crazy uh yeah like i don't know if you've had the same thing though like yeah in the States. yeah yeah that's been my experience too yeah which is it's, it's kind of scary i think uh i mean i'm grateful that a lot of my friends I double jabbed anyway, so we're we're all good to go. Uh, we're so much safer, but um, yeah, I mean it's 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 weird when you look at it, like, and it's um, it's very it's very political in some parts of the world uh, as to whether or not you get it, and it's uh, that weirds me out. But it's yeah, hopefully we'll all come round eventually. <laughs> And yeah we'll, we'll all get along and we'll all be friends <laughs> we'll all... yeah <laughs> yeah that's what i mean i just can't i just can't wait i just can't wait till you know I, I i see i see things you know just how it was how it was a year ago when you know we could all look forward to i don't know the big sporting events the big concerts the big festivals it's just been such a shame that everything's been completely just just it's just gone you know the music industry was just barren for about a year and it's just so sad um yeah but um anyway you know let's get to some happier stuff um one of the things i think a lot of a lot of good music is gonna come out a lot of good music has come out but a a lot more good music yeah i think even though it's been sad we haven't been able to play everybody's been been making magic so (laughs) yeah yeah, and we've we've seen some um, some you know huge rising stars come out of this as well you know some yeah insane artists and songwriters and incredible musicians as well um I guess that's 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 kind of why we started this because we felt that like um you know everything was kind of at an all time low let's try and let's try and lift it up again um by talking to these people and that that's you know that was one of the reasons we did it but one of the things I found out about Moonchild whilst we did our research I didn't realize um that the band has supported Stevie Wonder Yeah that happened early on it was a big surprise to us <laughs> That must have been incredible. I mean, can you talk a bit about that? Yeah, so uh, there's a a radio DJ called, his name's Kevin Nash, and he found our music. I don't remember how he found it, but uh, he works at Stevie's radio station and was incredibly kind enough to play some of our music for Stevie. Um, And I think this was before Please Rewind. I think it was really early. Uh, And we got an email from him that was like, we want you to, TV wants you to have, to have you on his house of toys concert, which was like in three days or something. And we thought it was a joke. Like, <laughs> cause we're all such huge TV fans are like, ah, oh, somebody's playing a prank on us. And, but then we checked all our social media and he had hit us up like everywhere, like trying to get a hold of us. And um, so, yeah, we, we ended up playing at that show and it was, it was really incredible. We got to talk to him a little bit after the show and it's definitely like a dream. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like, uh, uh, yeah, you couldn't write it. It's just, that sounds insane. I think one of the things, I was, sorry, go for it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I had a day job at a bakery at the time and I was like, Oh my God, how am I going to get the time off? And all I had to do was be like, yeah, so Stevie Wonder called and they're like, take it, take the time off. Go, we'll cover for you. <laughs> so anyway. That's sick. I think um, that's that's something we all have to maneuver is like when you've got like a full time job or you've got a job in the way of the music and you're like, OK, you got to think when in advance because you've got to come up with your excuses early. Like, you know, am I going to be sick that day? Is, is someone hurt? Right. That day? What's going to happen? Right. Go and do that gig or just go make it. Yeah. Um, it's definitely something everyone can relate to. Uh, something I, I was like just come, kind of uh, Googled by like, you know, just uh, leading up to this episode was um, about like the name Moonchild. Now I've got a theory and I don't know if you'd be able to confirm or deny it, but um, according to Google, a moon child is someone born under the star sign cancer, uh, the cancer star sign. So I'm assuming the three of you 
are all born within that star sign. I wish we were. That would be a <laughs> oh, really cool reason. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah, a lot of people ask us that actually, but none of us are cancers. <laughs> oh, no. uh, we just, we bonded stargazing on that tour where we were like listening to all the same music. We went stargazing just the three of us one night and we were like, we should start a project. And then when, um, when we wrote our first song, we wrote about stargazing. So Be Free is like about being under the stars and you know, uh, looking up at the sky. And so we kind of had that theme in mind when we were trying to find a name. And so we were just kind of like brainstorming under that theme and, and found in Child. Yeah, no, that's cool. And then I guess um, the sort of one of the, one of the questions I've got in the back of my mind as well was, um, Within, like, you know, you've got your, your, your Moonchild stuff, you've got your solo stuff. Like, what's the, f like, future ambitions with your solo projects? Yeah, I have a lot of collaborations going on right now. Um, I'm working on a project with Jacob Mann and Phil Boudreau, and I'm working on a project with Jamla, uh, which is Ninth Wonders label. And uh, Kiefer and I have started a little project. And, uh, yeah, I'm trying to do – I love – collaborating so much like I I'm happy that I can do solo stuff it's like really empowering and it I feel like as a female singer it's gotten me a lot of respect from from people just the fact that I do produce um so it it was important for me to put solo stuff out for a lot of reasons but now that I've kind of done that I'm like okay I'll put out like a beat tape of stuff that I don't end up using but what I really find the most joy in is collaborating with other people and and feeding off of their ideas and their energy and making music that way so. I mean has how's that sort of informed you back on like your uh writing style you know like have you learned like all these different techniques that someone else does or approaches that you would never have sort of thought of yeah I mean I every time I learn more about logic you know like there's just so much everybody does things a different way and has different plugins and uses them a different way. So for, for that alone, it's like a free lesson, you know, <laughs> it's like, Oh, I didn't know you could do that. Oh, that plugin is awesome. Tell me where it is, you know, and what you put it on. Um, there's just like an infinite amount of knowledge to, together. So that's always fun. And then, you know, the people I work with have different skills. So like, whereas I might sit there and play the keys a million times to get like the perfect take or like drag things around. It's, you know, Jacob Mann is like an insane keyboardist and so is Keeper, and they can just like play all of this stuff that maybe I'm hearing but won't flow or even that I'm not hearing because they have their own musical voices that I love. So I think just, I think Jazzy Jeff said this thing where the music gets better when more people, when there's more minds, when more people are working on it. And I think that's true. We just mm -hmm. like finding the right people is, is key, like finding people who you both love each other's sound and you can kind of find this shared vision that doesn't feel like you're always butting heads. But once you find people who kind of have that you gel with, the, the music comes faster and I think it ends up cooler. <laughs> yeah, of course. So. I think when you've got the right people as well, it's almost when you get into that room and you know, you've got the, you've got the, the perfect band and you're all on the same wavelength. It's like creating magic. It's, it's, it's the best. Yeah. And I think it's also yeah. like, I think it's also the best way to improve as well at your whether it's at your instrument or you know with writing or just any performing yeah. yeah exactly that's jamming is just is the best way for improvement because you get to feed off so many other people and you know everything that they do you learn off and everything that you do they learn off it's just a beneficial for everyone don't you think yeah I mean even just warming up like oh you do those warm-ups oh cool let me try that or like you know yeah like new melodies like I you know we all hear kind of similar melodies you kind of get stuck in what what you're hearing so to hear the way someone else would approach you know a beat melodically is always really refreshing and cool so yeah like you said endless knowledge <laughs> so with um you know you're saying with like when the more people you collaborate with the more kind of uh the, the the more you can get out of it uh, we actually brought this up with adam neely a while back um and it was the idea of uh, too many cooks spoil the broth I don't know if you've heard that say, saying before, whereas, you know, like you get too many people involved and it will like, it'll, it'll kind of ruin it. Do you, th do you think that's the case with music? I bet it can be. Um, I haven't worked in like a really big group before. I think the biggest has been four or five. And when it was that big, 
we definitely had kind of defined roles because not everybody can do everything. Um, I've had the most fun with two or three people because <laughs> yeah. then we can all kind of like get all our ideas out and contribute in a way that doesn't feel like like too many cooks like they're saying so yeah I guess it's about finding that perfect balance isn't it yeah I think so and everybody's different you know yeah 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 yeah. yeah. I guess um well, another question I really wanted to ask um one of the things I find most unique about the band is um is your is your voice um <laughs> Great, incredible voice. And it's so unique as well. It's almost, I don't know, I've always, I mean, I'm not an expert by any means, but it's, it's always not, it always sounds like it's not just singing. It's like a, another instrument added to the, uh, to the, uh, the texture of the whole band. Um, you obviously play uh, different instruments as well, like saxophone and um, flute, right? Um, so, so I guess the question I'm trying to ask is, you know, I mean, your, your, your style of voice, your unique, like, timbre, like, th- does that come from a certain influence or was that just completely, were you born with that? And as well as that, um, with the instruments that you play, how do you kind of decide which goes into the record? Mm. Yeah, I, I think a, a lot of people tell me that I sing like I play or I play like I sing, which yeah. I don't know that I, I, under, I believe it. It's not intentional. I think it's just all me. So it's just like coming out in any form. Um, I think every singer has influences, you know, I'd say my biggest are like Emily King, Eric Badu, um, yeah. probably Jill Scott, of course, you know, <laughs> there's, there's a long list, but that would probably be like my top three of, of influences. I really like, oh, King, you know, We Are King, the, the trio, or the duo now. I don't think oh my God, they're, oh, you got to check them out. What sort of genre? Huge influence. It's like uh, neo soul, jazz, R&B magical goodness <laughs> so i love uh the the singers are paris and amber i love the way they sing so yeah there's just that was a lot of influences but for me i think i kind of lean towards flute over saxophone when i'm recording i think the flute just lays really nicely on um on beat music and and r b music especially kind of in the lower register it just like adds this timbre that's that's really pretty so i kind of go there first unless we've decided we want to do a horn solely and then i'll go to saxophone or maybe we'll do a woodwind solely depending on the song but yeah no i think uh, that's one of the cool things is like uh that like the sort of the, the sax playing and the, the flute playing is also like it's so melodic when i mean you you the three of you went to uh jazz school right so i'm very confident you you can shred on it or something like that or <laughs> you can like bebop lines over it just for like banter but um i mean for the record's sake at least it's like definitely uh the priority is with the melody which is kind of i think the the, the better decision for you know more contemporary soul music um yeah. yeah when we play live we add more solos and solis in just because we we love that stuff but for the album it's very much like what does the song call for so yeah definitely i mean um i think we can start uh wrapping things yeah. up if you're, you're happy with that Jeff. yeah i mean so like uh what's what's the next six months looking like i mean it's not even six six months later if we like February 2022 or something, yeah. No. Um, geez, uh, yeah. What's what's like uh, sort of uh, the short term future looking like for you and Moonchild? Yeah, we're uh, as Moonchild, we're just getting ready to to release the album. The music's done, but there's so many other things, you know, art and animations and singles and videos and photos and posters and merch so <laughs> we're just trying to work through the big list of things you have to do before you you release an album and, and go on tour um and then yeah for me i have i'm trying to finish up what i started over quarantine <laughs> so i'm gonna go to rally and try and finish this album with jamla and uh try and finish the album with jacob man and build the grow and i have some collaborations here and there still kind of floating so i need to <laughs> to do those too so it'll be a lot of recording and and um uh, getting ready to go on tour yeah awesome. and busy few months then for um for you and the band um anything you'd like to finish with or add no i think um I, i'm just counting down the days when uh you guys announce you're coming back to the uk and 
<laughs> I know we can't wait. We love playing in the UK. It's it's always a blast. You guys yeah. are really good to us, so thank you. hundred <laughs> uh, percent. As soon as the next uh, tour is announced, we'll we'll be there. Um, uh, wait, waving the flag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah for sure um but yeah we'll call it a day there guys thank you for watching um all of amber's links and all of moonchild's links will be in the description um thank you for watching amber thank you so much for joining us it's been so good thanks for having me no problem guys click subscribe and click all the buttons um yeah hope you enjoyed and see you next time <laughs>